Oh shit! It's I, I ain't never heard that before. It says something. This meeting is being recorded, but all right. All right, yo, welcome to the Two Eighty Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Los Def, and I'm here with two special guests. Uh, introduce yourself. Uh, the person to my top uh, left, I guess. I'm, I'm gonna readjust. What's up? What's up? Is it me? Yes, there's you. Yes. Uh, what's up? My name is Bria. Uh, y'all may know me. Uh, I got a little clothing brand uh, called Bear Fine, and I'm just happy to be here. You know, on the Two Eighty Plus Podcast. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, introduce yourself, family. It's G's, you know, family of the uh, host of the 280 Plus podcast. Yeah. You know, this is not our first podcast. Been out the places, but I'm happy to be on your podcast for the first time. Yo, yo, I appreciate it, man. Yo, yeah, definitely. This is my this is my cousin. This is my first cousin. Uh, yeah, we got a we got a real big family. Um you know, he for a while, for a while growing up, he was like my second favorite cousin. Um, oh, and I don't even know if he realized that. Yeah, you know I mean, but like, you know, Clee was my favorite cousin just because he was older and I looked up to him, whatever. But you know, Clee, you know, I don't see this guy, so like, you're definitely my favorite. Yeah, you know I mean, and it's, that's not by default. You, you, you developed into that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and I, I remember I, I brought I brought G's out to YC a couple different times. Yeah, you know I mean, he went to the train boo. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he was talking about, uh, you know, you, YC is a place that uh, if if you wanted to go on like witness protection, like you'd be all right there. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, bro. You, I don't know. Yeah, like you might get exposed out there, fam. <laughs> What'd you say? I said I don't remember saying that, but I'm sure I said it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely. I, I think, and then, and then it was funny because then you know he's watching some games, and then he's seen somebody that he knew from from around the way, and I was like, "Yo, that's crazy! Like, that's crazy." Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, "Yeah, you definitely. Yeah, that's not a place you want to go. Witness protection, bro. You know, <laughs> yeah, you gonna, somebody might find you. Yeah, somebody gonna find you in YC, man. So we, it's a small town, but it's it it's a networking town. Yeah, you know I mean, so, mm-hmm. but um, all right, man. So let's uh, yo. Let's talk about real quick. Let's talk about adulting, right? Yeah, you know what I mean, and and uh, you know how how geez, you just turned? Did you just turn thirty? I did. You just turned thirty. 30. Okay, all right. And Bree, how old are you? Uh, twenty seven. Twenty seven. All right. So you you right at the cusp. You know what yeah, I mean, yeah. like you, but now you you at a good, real good age right now. That's like a good prime. Yeah. You know what I mean, so so like yo, know, adulting, man. Like um, you know, just over time, like. Um, I realized there's a lot of different aspects of Dalton that I just really wasn't prepared for. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like for me, you know, paying bills, obviously, like not, I, I knew I was going to have bills, but just the fact that they just keep coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and then uh, just constant deadlines and things like that. But like, what are some aspects of adulting that, you know, you, you knew were coming, but you just didn't realize the magnitude of them. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Bria. Uh, hmm. aspects of adulting uh, you know I think maybe me being a, a woman I would say like taking care of my parents a little bit you know I wasn't really expecting I, I guess I was but you know what I mean it's just it's like a real life thing you know what I mean so I would say that like taking care of my parents and getting older and just uh just having that responsibility placed on me is like it's a, it's, a, it's a learning curve. Okay. Okay. And and do you have to do a lot or just like little things? Like, cause I know with parents, yeah. they don't know nothing about technology. So you always gotta mm, like yes. go hook something up for them, whatever. Yes. Yes. The memes, like where you be like, you fixing something and they're like, you're an electrician or something. That's how I feel fixing my mom and dad's stuff. Okay. They, they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, G's? Yeah. What, what's something about adulting that like you just did not like, you wasn't prepared uh, for it? <laughs> literally like no days off like even on your days mm. off you got other <laughs> shit to do that can't wait can't do it on your day on you can only do it on your day off you know yeah. so it's just like all right bet i'm gonna spend this weekend doing it's like no you're not you're gonna spend <laughs> this weekend getting your license renewed or yep. taking your car to get or taking your kid to do something it, it never stops it's just like any little time you find yeah like, like how you got this you doing this this for you i don't I still ain't found that time to find something yeah. to do. So I still we gotta juggle it all. I know, and and this is now it's starting to turn into like a little job. Like, cause I just be like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta prepare, I gotta think about this, right. I gotta, I gotta network, I gotta yeah. schedule people. Like, 
um, reschedule sometimes and it's it's all good it all, you know life happens whatever um another thing though I wasn't prepared for was like just dealing with the stupidity of adults right like like yo fam like you know when when you when you're a kid you, you know we're all we're all dumb yeah you know I mean as kids yeah you know I mean we're, we're supposed to be like but like adults fam like adults are dumb as fuck man like and I the reason I say that is because you know just a couple weeks ago we had like a gas crisis right and motherfuckers was oh. like yo and i i didn't even know about, like i i feel like i'm under a rock sometimes yeah you know i mean cuz i didn't even know there was a gas crisis but then people was at, at work was talking about it and i was like like I, i'm listening to them whatever i know about what you say i never even realized when the gas prices are soaring people are like oh gas is x amount per gallon i'm like I never look at that because I gotta get it. No matter, like yeah, I gotta get it. Whatever. I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really complain about gas prices no more. I mean, I'm, I'm, I gotta go to where I gotta go. So, so I'm seeing people who like panic about this gas attack, whatever. Or, yeah, this like hack. It really was a hack, whatever. And and then people talking about filling up tanks, whatever. And then you see on online, you see people filling up Tupperware. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do with Tupperware? A Tupperware thing of gas, whatever. So like. I don't, I don't know, man. What, what, what did y'all think about this whole gas crisis and all that? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that they like they say things to, to to cause it to happen. You know what I mean? Like, was it really a gas shortage? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or is it the fact that everybody's running out and getting it now? It's a gas shortage. I don't, I don't know. But I don't pay attention to it. Okay, you had your you had your third eye, third eye open. You know what I'm saying? You was looking. You was <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I tried. Right. I just figured but like, has there ever been a gas shortage? What do we have to compare it to? How long was the last gas shortage? Right. I right. just figure like, you know, think for a week and then we'll be good. Like, yeah. Well, apparently, like, it really was a hack. Like, there was this like European like cyber attack <laughs> company, and the reason why it it it, it was lifted, or whatever, was because um the the company Colonial Gas, whatever, they paid the ransom. It was like five million dollars. And I'm like, yo, that's, yeah, like, I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Like, and, um, yeah, like, but I'm thinking like, yo, can't they just do that shit again? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know, bro. Exactly. <laughs> yo, technology is crazy. Like, you can, you can hack, get, like, people can really ruin our lives. You know what I mean? And people, you know, that shit's kind of scary, man. But, all right. Um, let's talk about, um, the power of networking, right? And then we're going to get into talking about rare finds. So, like, um, you know, it's funny, like the way Twitter works and, and, and social media, and it's just like, you don't realize who has connections to who, whatever. So, you know, I, I got my family in, in, in Philadelphia, whatever, and, and they don't, they don't know anybody from where I'm, I'm from, whatever. And then I just started noticing like, you know, over time, whatever on Twitter, you two like would like kind of interact or whatever, or, or like, you know, she would be like on stuff, whatever. And then like, I started like, I, it was last summer, my man, like, he had he had one of your shirts on whatever and i was like oh shit like did, is that rare find and he was like he was like yeah i got a couple pieces whatever <laughs> and I, i'm just like like when did i don't did you guys like notice that whatever i don't know like like i just think it's kind of cool like just how social media works and how you know what i mean you can just kind of connect with people um and kind of connect the dots whatever but like when did you start following her or, or when did you buy your first piece of hers whatever um, I think I was even on board before. I don't know when Rare Fine started, but I remember you was like doing a thrifting thing. So she was just like, I can't remember when. I, I'm sure you guys were talking about something and I was like, oh, and then we followed each other from there. I can't remember exactly when that started. But yeah, like she was doing thrifting and she had a jacket. I said, damn, that jacket, nice. Like, yeah. you know, we DM, you know, linked up. Sent it out, you know, good business. And then it kept going. I got some rare fine. I was going to put on the shirt, but I was like, I don't want to butter you up. So I'm going to just throw on a regular black tee. <laughs> yeah, that's just the beauty of social media, you know? Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. And, like, y'all y'all have, I feel like y'all have, like, a, and we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about fan bases, and we're going to talk about, you know, some people that y'all like that we're going to talk about delusional fans but I, i'm not gonna go there yet but yeah i feel yeah. like y'all have a connection with with a certain artist and that too whatever but um but yeah just just uh bria just talk about the just the power of networking on, on social media and like you know how far has has rare find like extended to like like how far is your reach have you have you noticed uh you know i mean 
I, I can't really say. I, I don't know. I feel like, you know what I mean, on, on Twitter, that is the, like, the beauty of social media. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you can't extend it. I feel like I've, I've, I've been trying to extend into Philly, you know what I mean, in all of these big surrounding cities. So I say, like, I'm kind of, kind of maybe in Philadelphia a little bit. I also got family in Philadelphia, so that okay. helps. That's but, um, but yeah, but no, the power of, of, of networking is crazy. And uh, I, I want to say I shipped out to Canada before, so okay. it's like it's out there, but I won't say that my reach is there. You know, I've just sold one shirt there. Nah, your reach is there. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't, uh, I don't even know what they call it, the six <laughs> views from the six. Hey, yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it was Toronto. Right, right. That's the stuff. So, so, yo, know, talk about Rare Fine and, and yeah, G's kind of touched on it, whatever. I do remember the start of it, whatever, but kind of tell us. What, what was that? You know what I mean? Like, what, what made you start Rare Find? Um, kind of tell us where it started and kind of where it's at right now, I guess. Okay. Well, I, I always loved drifting. You know, yeah. I definitely always loved drifting, uh, like, in high school. Like, 2012, we was big on, like, the windbreakers, the 90s windbreakers and stuff. So that's kind of where it started. I was just really, really just into that. And um, kind of years went by, and I just had all of these old like thrifting clothes and I'm like man I can't get rid of them you know I can't, I'm not gonna give them back to the goodwill right or to, you know the <laughs> Salvation Army I should I should just maybe sell them and I kind of just got introduced to the whole world of thrifting like it was way more than what I thought it's a whole thing okay so I was like, okay you know I'm gonna get into it I started going to like like Philadelphia and other areas where it's like it's more it's major and getting nice pieces and just selling I think um I was like I, I got the, um, I don't know if I should continue or wait. Nah, you good, you good, you good, you good, you good. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so I got the, um, I, uh, I got my logo made, this logo right here. And, yeah. uh, and somebody wrote me like, yo, that'd be hot on a, on a t-shirt. You know, you should maybe just sell t-shirts. And I'm like, hmm, I put it on t-shirts and it looked good. And I kind of just, it just expanded. You know what I mean? It just, it just grew from selling old vintage pieces to like selling my own. And it's kind of like taking over now, you know, selling my own clothes. I, I rarely thrift. Okay. <laughs> wow. So so you didn't so, even yeah. have any intentions of this being like a, a clothing company. You just, just the thrifting, whatever. No, not, not originally. No, I just wanted to sell clothes and I just wanted, you know, a, a logo to like enforce, enforce my thrifting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, definitely, yeah. it's definitely a hot brand. Um, I, now though, I feel like there's a lot of brands kind of popping up, you know what I mean? Locally, whatever. Um, do you, do you view those brands as competition or, you know what I mean? Is it, is it starting to get saturated uh, or at what point does, at what point do things get saturated? Cause even, even me, like I'm kind of getting into something that's a somewhat saturated market, but maybe where I'm at, or maybe what I, you know, my perspective is different from other people's, but what do you think? Yeah. I, I mean, I think that it was probably saturated before I even got involved. So it's kind of like, it was it was already a thing. I think that I don't, I mean, the other clothing brands in the city, I definitely don't look at them as competition or, you know, I, I, def, I just, I see them, you know what I mean? I definitely okay. see some and I'm like, yo, they're really good. You know, they're kind of like, you know, I gotta, I gotta do, they're inspiring in a sense. You okay. know what I mean? It's like, okay. oh, that's nice. I didn't think of that. Right, but, um, but so, so I just, I, I kind of look at it like that. And the t-shirt market is oversaturated, but I try to be different. Okay. And yeah, so are are you, what's new? What's coming new for Rare Fine? Are you going to come out with more piece? Like, um, instead of just t-shirts, are you getting like, because I always think like, you know, are, are, I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, what were you going to say? No, I was just saying like, are you going to get pants? Are you getting like other things? Or, you know, like what's, you know, what's coming new? What's, what's on her? I've been thinking about getting into like clothing pieces. Like I love the t-shirts and I feel like that's my bread and butter is the t-shirts and just like, just going hard with the designs. But I definitely want to get into um, like clothing pieces. I, I'm kind of working on something now that's like, okay, this could be, you know, a fit that someone wears, maybe not out, maybe somewhere different. You know what I mean? I feel like my target audience is the streetwear, wear it out to the club, something like that. But yeah. try to switch it up a little bit. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, so that's what's coming in the summer line. That's what's up. And and I think uh people I think one time I seen you on the timeline talk about this idea of like, yo, wouldn't it be it'd be cool if we had some uh, uh, a clothing store that just kind of had all local brands, whatever. Like, I yeah. mean, is, is anybody kind of you know getting that started or is that um, just a is that I'm just trying to think thing? I seen that I retweeted that I want to say someone on Twitter said something about that. Um, I think Eric or somebody, but he said that and I seen on Facebook uh 
Nate Knight might have uh, said something about that too, like having a having a shop. So I'm like, I don't know. I, I would definitely be interested in doing that. You think like, what do you think it would it would sell? You think it would be good? I think it would be good because I I think we do need to bring back like urban. You know what I mean, our own streetwear. You know what I mean, because like you know the style now is is high designer, and I'm like. And you know, there's issues with that. You know what I'm saying? Like those aren't yeah. black owned companies. Um, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, okay. like they they don't represent us, whatever. Um, so like I would definitely uh, support like a, a urban streetwear um, uh, revitalization, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a lot of brands, so I think it could uh, fill it. I think the store could be filled up with a lot of different pieces. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, let's switch it up now, um, because yeah. we're gonna get G's up in here now. So like. Let's talk about, and, and this is going to kind of segue into our music talk, I, I, I believe. So um, let's talk about fan bases that are just like rabid fan bases. So like like crazy fan bases. Um, Stan, who had, what artists, which artists do you feel have the most Stan-like uh, fan bases? And the thing is with a Stan, the, the one part of that is delusion. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> what, 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 what uh, sure. artists do you think right now have the most like stand like fan bases? Uh, and we'll start with you, G's. Um, it's funny. I don't want to step on what we get on later, but <laughs> that person that we, you know, alluded to, he probably don't even have a top five stand base. Like you got like, okay. you got like the barbs, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There. Then you got the Beehive. Any group of fans that like literally swarm people who say bad things, like that's that's a different level, you know. Okay. Oh, so you're saying okay. I don't, you know, uh J. Cole, I guess, you know, he got he got some pretty once they start talking about you not intellectually <laughs> capable, uh understand it's just like all right, you yeah. up there now. Once y'all start you know, <laughs> Uh, who else? Who else will we? Who else we missing? Is Cardi up there yet? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think um, low key Travis Scott fans. They are. I don't see. You're one of them. <laughs> Yo, you're one of them. Oh my <laughs> god! I'm a. I'm a stand. I'm a stand. I was, I mean, because yo, I, I feel like they make it seem like he's just better than what he is. You know, it's and it's like. He's okay. He's okay. But I mean, they go, they go pretty hard. And I feel like they got like hype beast. You know what I mean? He's the new hype beast rapper. Nah, yes. I think I think there are other hype beast rappers. Like uh Playboy Cardi is definitely Ooh, hype, yeah, crazy yeah. hype beast, whatever. Like, yeah. like I don't even think there's talent it. there. Yeah, you know I mean, like yeah, Travis though. Know. Travis though, I don't I am we I could defend Travis because I'm I got you know, I got smoke for your man's too, whatever, but but uh <laughs> That might be because of um, the Jenner connection, you know, a bunch of people that like her, like him by default, you know, mm, you know, they sure. combine their whole fan base. Yeah. That could have something to do with it. I would, I want to throw in NBA Youngboy. I don't personally listen to him, yeah. but he's huge. Like, he got, you yeah. know, when you look at the stats. all the YouTube numbers, you know, it's he might be up there, like. Yeah. True. And it's a lot of people that, like, it's the young people, like my nephew, I mean, he he raves like he's the greatest rapper, and it's like, it's a little justified, but it's a it's a lot hype too. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely. Yeah, I think, well, he, he's not right. yeah, and and if we talk about like throughout the history, like you know, definitely like Eminem has like a weird fan base now. Probably that yeah. doesn't look like any of us, whatever. But like we know that they exist because. He's like, if he drops something, that shit going platinum, like yeah. in the first week, whatever. And then people think like, oh, yo, Eminem is killing the game. It's like, no, he just has <laughs> half hands for 20 all, years. All stuff. Yeah, I mean, It's accumulation at this point. Um, J. Cole might be kind of in there a little bit. Not, and I don't think it's not justified. I think it's, it's somewhat justified, but like I could, I could see where Jesus is going there. The barbs, definitely. Yeah, anything that ha if you have a name for your fan base, you probably got. You no, know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I think I think Kanye is in there too, but like people think that's all justified. But I don't know, Kanye fans, mm -hmm. they just they don't think he does anything wrong. Like everything that he puts out is like high art, and it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, it, I can respect a Kanye West fan that like knows when Kanye West fell off. You know what I mean? I okay. can respect that. Fan. Okay. Yes. But if if they're still like, nah, you know. Would you say? 
that I'm in that camp. I haven't heard it. Kanye got like two gospel albums. He got the album from Wyoming that I haven't heard. So it was <laughs> yeah, like, I haven't really had Kanye in my life since the life of Pablo. And, th- and after that, it was just like, I don't know where he's going with this, you know. Yeah. Um, Kids see Ghost, Kids see Ghost with, with Cuddy. Cuddy probably in that stand group too. Okay, okay. Probably. Okay. Um. Well, I don't know. Um. Yeah, I would. I would definitely agree with with some of that. But what was you? What was you gonna say though, Bria? Like earlier, what was you gonna say? Oh, um, it's probably about Kanye. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying. Like, I can I can respect the ones that that, that tell it like it is because just like you said, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I I just stopped listening to Kanye after a certain point, and I'm still remain a fan, and I will defend him. Like, now nah, Kanye West is still the goat, but. This new stuff is just, it's just, I don't know, it's too hard. It's too hard to take in. All right. So I think, see, I think that's where you, that's why you probably don't like Travis Scott, whatever. It's like, I don't think you, I don't think you like the newer music at all. Is that fair? No, that's not it. I like Travis Scott. I mean, that, that album, The Rodeo was a great album. Yeah. So it's like, I do like Travis Scott, but I just think that it's a little over gassed. I think that like, he's, he's, he has his place, you know what I mean? But he can't be mentioned with certain rappers and i like i like the new music i like anything that's good okay well yeah i think i think that's i think travis makes good music i don't i'm not gonna say he bars nothing up yeah you know i mean he's not that's not what i'm here for when i listen to travis right. you know what i mean okay. but i started to you know kind of accept the the melodies whatever he got the, this cadence that like anything he says just sounds cool whatever but right. i understand because he has kids as his fans too you know what i mean so like i mm-hmm. i don't want to get you know kind of lumped into that part of the fan base where it's right, like okay. everything he does is great whatever but like i don't he don't miss though you know what i mean like birds in the trap right cuz like that's one of the like, that was heat right like <laughs> are you gonna, think- are you, gonna, you ain't gonna say that about birds in the trap that was yeah, you know that was your there. that part blank that, that part was a blanked out that was a great album yeah i really like that album like um so yeah so coming off that album what was the next one called? Um, um Astro, Astro World. Astro World. Astro, yeah. I was on board for Astro World. I do remember. It's just like, has he dropped the album after Astro World? Um, well, he did the, the Jack Boys came out last year. And I mean, that was like the the okay. comp, the yeah, you know I mean that was like a seven track joint, but I was I was playing that all year, but um, but yeah, like I just I, think rap has elevated way past just bars. Like it's it's really cadence, sound, it's just it's all of that. So all these new rappers, they just package all that on top of a persona and just roll with it. Like, yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, and y'all talked about Kanye real quick. I'm just went so like Life of Pablo. Like some of y'all, that's like the last. Th- so do y'all? Did y'all like like y'all like Life of Pablo? No. Okay, all right. That's what I don't right. do. Other opinion, like no. Do- okay, because I I just. There was tracks where he didn't he didn't even rap on certain tracks like it was just he was just playing music and I'm like come on bro like the joint with Tiana Taylor the the video whatever there's there's no bars on it like he's just I'm like yeah. come on man like he just he he put stuff out where it's like he I feel like he thinks he's smarter than everybody and it's like it's kind of condescending a little bit to me like I don't know <laughs> yeah I would say that the like the production behind that album and like kind of like the rollout of how like he kind of was in the the uh, like stadium and had everybody there that video that was. That was hot, but the album itself, I just think it was, it just wasn't that good. I'm, I don't know. I be, I be, I love Jesus though, so I ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. That album was great. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh, yeah, on, my, that was an A one album. I don't understand. Jesus was. Jesus was great. The timing, everything about it. That what? was a great album. Really? Like it was definitely. I mean, it was the uh, of the, all the major releases that came out that summer. It was the worst of those releases. The worst of those, yes. Matt right. Miller's Magna Matt Carta, Miller's Magna bad? Carta, Born Center, uh, uh, The Gifted, um, like all those came out at the same You're time. You're telling me The Gifted was better than Jesus? Yes, the, obviously. The Gifted yes. was great, but wow, no, no. The Gifted but, is and, yeah. and Matt Miller's uh, watching movies with the sound off. That wasn't better. I, even, I'm not. Even well, I'm, I, I'm not. I don't. I don't listen to Matt Miller. I'm not. Oh, okay. I don't have nothing against. Yeah, but no, I, I do. Matt Miller is dope, but nah. Jesus, Born Sinner was probably above it. Magna Carter. Me and my brother do this all the time. We go track for track with Magna Carter and Jesus, and it's like they 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 divvied up. I don't care. <laughs> the only re- I think the only criticism Magna Carter gets is just it felt like. Hove was trying to be too current. Yeah, you know I mean, like he was trying to just he was trying to chase the sound, whatever. But 
Magna Carta really it's it's not bad. I mean it's not, but like I don't think it's Jesus. Not there's not a what song is hot from Jesus like blood on the leaves. Like well, blood it, I, leaves. I don't know how that goes. Like I don't. I don't <laughs> think song yeah, on the, the hang up. I'm hanging up. <laughs> it just seemed like Kanye was in some super rebellious stage. Where can you imagine if late registration Kanye got his hands on the Strange Fruit sample? Like, it, it would have just been a whole different song. He was on that John talking about baby mom sitting courtside and Gucci bags. It was, it was just like, that's not what you do on that sample. Like, you know, I don't want him. Okay. It, it was it was great. And it's like, he, and around that time, he gave us the greatest interviews. You know what I mean? It just, I just was, I, that was when I loved Kanye West probably the most. Okay. You know what I mean? He gave us the infamous uh, houseway. All of that was Yeezus, like. All right, all right. Well, maybe yeah, Yeezus definitely probably had some impact because people, you know, people say Travis is all over over Yeezus in terms of production, mm -hmm. whatever. So, you know, maybe that's the birth of kind of Travis and all that. So maybe it, that. maybe it does serve a place, but like that's not something I'm ever I'm never going to that. <laughs> Personally, sorry, but sorry to hear that. Uh, right. So, but talk about, and I, I, I like to poke fun at y'all though. It, I don't really got no real smoke for him, but I just think that he's a little overrated, whatever. But like, we're gonna talk about Frank Ocean, whatever. Like, and that's who y'all love. Y'all love some Frank Ocean, and and all right. So when you look at his discography, it's like wow. Like I, I looked it up, and I was thinking like, wait up, I didn't even need to look this up because I know what it is. It's Nostalgia <laughs> Ultra, the mixtape. Channel Orange and then Blonde, whatever. So, one hot album every ten year average, and that's so. What, what did the host say? That's lame, bro. Like, like so. Like, what, what's up with what, what, what's the, 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 the real two thousand five early? I think looking at albums and you know, like two two albums, three albums. That's early hip hop. A way to look look at it, you know. Now it's just like you release a song, you release. The EP you dropped two songs there. I dropped a four pack here, and we'd be cool for two years. You know, it's just that's a different way to look at it. You know, you don't think so? Nah, I, I just think like, well, and, and the thing is, you might. I think he came out the gate smoking. Yeah, you know I mean, like, you know, he wins right. Grammys off off of that, whatever. So I think, I think that's what most of his fans are kind of like hanging their hat on. Like they're hanging their hat on that. But then it's like, what have you done for me lately? You know what I mean? It's part of that too. It's like, you know. Nothing really, but I just think, I mean, you can't, you can't look over to like his features even like, you know what I mean? He, the people that pick him for his features are all goats. So it's like, there, there's a reason, you know what I mean? And Blonde was great. So it's like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big, big Frank Ocean fan. <laughs> okay. So what about like, is it his vocals? Is it his songwriting? What, what about him? Like, so I can understand. Cause I don't, I don't think he's the best vocalist, whatever. Now he might be a good no. songwriter. But um, w w what is it about Frank Ocean that like I think I I don't think it's the I don't think it's his vocal vocals per se I think it's just it's everything you know it's okay. it's his writing for sure I think he's got a good pen I think the you know I mean his 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 how he, just everything the way he talks about the songs the lyrics they make you think all of that just go listen to Channel Orange looks. <laughs> so how how old were you when that came out because that I think that could that could have an influence uh, 2012 that was my senior year i okay. was probably 17 18 yeah exactly and it was like it was a staple for my year it was just great all right so i right, see there, there you we can come to an understanding because now i understand like that was your senior year you was you know what i mean like coming yeah. of age whatever and right. th those albums like kind of stick out to you whatever whatever it is like i remember Oh wow! I remember my senior year. Uh, Carter Carter two was out, whatever. And actually, we could kind of we could we could oh. switch to this too. This guy too. He has a crazy fan base. But so for you, G's, what's up with Frank Ocean, man? Like, why is he so high on your on your list, man? <laughs> um, you know what? <laughs> the music is just good. You know, okay. it's just like it's almost that thing where somebody come out the gate right, and they're getting too much praise and you know, too much, too many accolades, and now people can't wait to, you know, knock them down. Every new person that come out, you'll see a little tweet like, oh, he doing what Frank Ocean think he doing. It's just like, all right, like, every single time it's a new person. And it's just like, that's telling, right? That means okay. something. I mean, somebody do something, oh, this what Frank, it's just like, all right, you know, it's usually the people who don't like them that kind of propel him to 
where he is now because the fans, we just want the music and we accept that we're not getting it a lot. <laughs> but the people who don't like like, where's the next album? Because they can't wait to be like, oh, y'all waited all this time for this, this, and this. And it's just like, relax, you know, just just relax. <laughs> yeah, actually, you might have, yeah, you might have just identified me then. Cause that's that's me. That's yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what is like, right, well, what is he doing? You gonna tweet like, all right, let me hear this so I can see yeah. the hype. Right, yep. That's not how fans move about. I think it. it's like you had to be there. That's like the perfect saying. You just you had to be there because. At this point, being a Frank Ocean fan, it's like, it's too late. When You're not probably going to get a lot of mu more music. Okay. You know, so it's like, you just had to be there for it. Okay. And did you like Blind G's or no? I listen to Blind a lot. Like, really? still. It's okay. a lot of good songs, man. It's a lot All of good right. songs. Yeah. All right, man. Because I, I respect your opinions, man. I might have to go back into <laughs> Ocean. Now, like I said, like I said, out the gate, uh, he was fire. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not going to deny that he won Grammys. You know what I mean, and he, you know, all this, whatever, all these accolades. But then, like I said, it's like, all right, man, like, you know, like, and it's, I think it's too, it's one thing to call, and I don't know if y'all call him the best or whatever, but like, it's one thing to have favorites and then being, you know, the best, or whatever. So, like, I don't think he, he's probably, yeah, y'all favorites and that's, you know, y'all. Yeah. He's my favorite. Him. I don't think he's the best singer of all okay. time or nothing like that. He's okay. just my favorite. All right, all right. Well, then, all right, so let's kind of switch it then, and too. And I just think it's funny, uh, too, Bria, because another artist, I think, and he has a crazy fan base, um, and I think a little bit delusional at this at this point in time, and it's probably, it's about Lil Wayne. So, like, is Lil Wayne, and, and I think, too, it, it's generations type thing. I mean, so you, you we're, you're, we're not that far in age, whatever, right. um, but probably enough to where, like, you know, you are probably like a different generation. So like, it's like Wayne, y'all, your goat. Is that is that why? You t Cause I just feel like Wayne hasn't done. Wow. Just, man, I, I mean, no, I definitely time. feel you. I can't say Wayne is the goat of our generation. I can't speak for the whole generation because there's people that hate Wayne. You know what I mean? Okay. Just okay. like, but for me, he is the goat, and and he will always be the goat. And it's like. He just, he, he gave us so much, you know what I mean? It's kind of like you have to respect him and he's still putting out offerings that's like, let me, let me, let me at least listen to it. Let me at least listen to it, you know, and let me be the judge. Okay. But his seeing, his seeing green uh, verse wasn't that, wasn't that hot. Okay. But, you know, but so, I don't know. So some stuff is like a hit or a miss, but that, uh, some stuff is heat. So I was like, I can't really, I can't really knock him. See, and I think at this point, he's like a legacy act. You know what I mean? So, like, I think he's always going to get, you know, anything that he puts out, he's, he's going to have a nice foundation because he has right. so many fans, whatever. But, like, it's like, you know, like, he's not getting, you know how it feels like Jay-Z is always getting better still? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I don't I don't see that with Wayne. I, I don't know. I think it's hard for Go ahead. No, no, I, I was not going to say nothing. I think it's hard for one rapper to define to be your personal GOAT for your whole life. It's just like, at one point in time, Jeezy was my GOAT, you know? Oh. Ross was the GOAT. T.I. was making good, T.I. had like a three album run that's as good as any three album run, you know? So it's like, a lot of, it's just like, let's go back to NBA Youngboy. A lot of those fans are gonna grow up and be like, yo, what the fuck was I doing? Like, you know, so it's like, that that Wayne run was really good. Yeah, it was, it was. It goes up against anybody's run, but it's just like, it's over. You gotta just. It's over now. <laughs> it is over. I think. I think the fact that it was so long and it kind of it kind of carried us through different stages. Because like you were saying, like like you know, you, you had a run for like three albums and they was the goat for that time. I feel like Wayne was just my goat for so long. It's just he's kind of stuck there. Nobody's gonna replace him. I, I can't get over it. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like it's, it's where it's at. <laughs> well, how long? How long was he your goat? Oh man, I was I was just thinking about this. I loved Wayne. I loved all variations of Wayne, like mixtape Wayne, of course, rock star Wayne. Yes, I was there for the rebirth. That album was gas. Um, that was good. The I'm, Carter, I'm on the hook. Huh? He said he's dying. That was a good album. He's dying on that. Yeah, hill. I was about to say that was a great album. Good album. Uh, the Carter three and even the Carter. Wait, wasn't the Carter four? What had um had yes. love on it? Uh, yeah, I think that six that was four. seven foot. Yeah, yeah. Four. even four was good. So it's like right up until then, he that was he was he was my goal. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, I think yeah for me, I, I just I still to me like peak Wayne for me is Carter two, um, and like I said, like I think Carter Carter three is his biggest 
commercial success, whatever. But yeah. but um, I think Carter. I would, would... I would ask this question: Would you rather have the Frank Ocean route, where it's like not a lot of music, but what's out is good, or have Wayne just keep dropping and you just watching them decline and decline, and it's hard to watch. After a while, you got to just look away. Like I don't know any Wayne Carter for like. How, how many dedications is it now? Six, seven? There's a lot of those. I was just gonna say the dedications. I actually was. That's still in like my like. I, I still mess with them. The, the dedicate dedication five was gas. Okay. That's <laughs> hey, hey, that's that's fine. I'm telling you it but, was. but remember, there was a time. Remember, there was a time when like Wayne was a meme. Like you know I mean, like when it was like like make a punchline like Lil Wayne, and it would be some bullshit. Yeah, you know I mean? because he got <laughs> he got on this like weird run where he was like saying like nonsense saying stuff, anything, whatever. And it's like, all right, bro. Like, was good. What'd you say? Huh? Remember when Fab was good, and that was just mm. like. Fa- you, know, you, don't, you don't think fab, fab is you don't think i think yeah he he's i think he gets he gets clowned whatever but i don't think fab got weaker whatever no i don't think i, so. I think I, earned, I think he earned that you know it's just like his music is just it's it just he made a song called wild thoughts like you 40 bro like <laughs> come on how <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that that oh. yeah. Fab is definitely like a joke <laughs> now. He like he he yeah. he's the butt of a lot of jokes, whatever. So like he it's is. hard it's hard to defend him because it's like yeah, you are doing some right. And the joke got truth, but he still does. He still can rap. You know what I mean. He still is putting out good. Yeah, like Freddie versus Jason. Like that's that's a more serious. Like mm-hmm. the kind of Fab you want to see. Whatever he's like, yeah. and Jesus is like, nah, I ain't fuck with that either. Whatever. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, some new music, all right? So um, a lot of stuff dropped last week, whatever, and I guess a lot of stuff dropped this past week as well. Um, but the the one that's, that everybody's talking about is the Cole album, and, you know, we're talking about kind of fan bases, and, and and you know, some some fan bases are a little bit more rabid than others, and I think Cole kind of gets into that, whatever, like where it's like he can kind of do no wrong. Um, but, you know, we've we, we seen, though, like, I don't know if it's a decline, whatever, but definitely for for some people, you know, they're they're kind of like just kind of even keel with him. Like they're not like really up or down. They're kind of like just indifferent. So the Cole album, I mean, I seen you talk about it on social media a little bit, Bria. So you said it was a three out of five. So like, has that changed? Uh, what you like about it? All that good stuff. I definitely went back and re-listened to it a couple times in the car. And I'm like, it it, it bumped up maybe to a 3.5, 3.8. Okay. It, it is it is still a solid, good album. You know what I mean? I think, though, I just, there's, there's like certain aspects of rappers that you like. And it's like the J. Cole that I like is that, is like 03 Adolescence. I, I, you know what I mean? That's like him in a nutshell. Dang, I love that. So yeah. it's like, that's be the, that be the J. Cole I, I want to hear. When I don't hear it, it's kind of like it's a letdown, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that the album is weak. So it's like I can't say the album was weak. It wasn't at all. It was definitely really good. I think I think it was it was just it, it, it I don't know. I can't explain it. It didn't sound like a J. Cole album. If okay. you if you go back and listen to his albums, they're like they're crafted and put together. This is kind of like, like I said, like this felt like when Drake dropped that, if you're reading this, it's too late. Where it's just it's some songs put together, and here's here here it go. Okay, all right. What you what you think about it, G's? Because we was we was kind of uh-huh. talking some shit about it like beforehand when the interlude came out. Because I thought that was a little get, big gas stuff. I was like, ah, uh, like yeah. I, I think <laughs> it's really uh, hype about the interlude, but I think once an artist dropped what's universally known as his best album, it's like no other album can really reach that. So 2014, Hill, uh, Force Hills Drive, right? So depending on what you grade that, even if you really like the other album, you can be like, well, that's a little too close to what I graded this. So <laughs> you kind of struggle with yourself on where exactly to put it. You kind of force yourself to knock it down because it's a little too close to what you think the greatest is. Okay. And also, it's a little bit of the artist's fault, but he dropped and he said this was 10 years in the making and uh, it's just like, all right, well, don't don't tell us all that. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, it's so he kind of, he kind of, you know, played into that himself. But um, I like it. You know, I like it. I listened to it a couple times. Um, it's probably third, I guess, right? Maybe fourth. 
I don't know because of his Forest Hills Drive and Dennis Forest. Okay, okay. Yeah, so then I, I guess it could be, you know, right there in that second tier, which is probably where it should end up being. Okay. I, I actually I really like it. Um and I, I see Bree was like anything above three three is gas, whatever. <laughs> and anything below is disrespect. So yeah. nah, see, I, I think I, I really did like this one. I, I would I would probably if, if I'm going, you know, out of five, whatever, I'm actually probably gonna lean more towards a four. I I'm not gonna say it's his best album yet, you know what I mean? But um I like I like what he was doing on there. I like I like the different sounds. I like the the different cadences, and he tried that stuff on KOD, whatever. And I feel like he's kind of getting into it a little bit more. Um, and I, I think this one has a lot of replay value because I don't think KOD K, that was the problem with it. Like it, it was all right when they first came out, but then it didn't have no, no replay value. Really back to it. Yeah, like it, a lot of people, I don't think they really went back to it. But this, it, there's some there's some joints on there where it's like, yeah, I'm I'm def I definitely want to listen to that. And I find myself just listening to it uh, in the gym, whatever. And just it, it just kind of plays because it's not that long. It's like less than 40 minutes. Um, one thing I don't like, though, um, and this might bring it down a point. I feel like he's playing. Is he playing some some uh, sh streaming games because he put the climb back on there and the climb back? Isn't that from that was from last year? Right. Do you remember that track? Anything Wait, come hey, back to life full yeah. circle. Yeah, like he put that on there and I was like, ah, that's a little, that's old. Like that's a little bit old. And I'm like, you know, and they do that. They, they put the old tracks on there. So it kind of like accumulates their numbers or whatever. So it's like, I don't know. It could be. I mean, I don't know. Or like maybe it was always on there and it just, I don't know. Yeah. And I found myself. Would, having, you, would you have anything to do with that intro with, uh, with your man's on there? That wouldn't have anything to do with it. With, with, with how it was rated? <laughs> no, with, with, with Cam. Hearing Cam come on. Oh, oh well, yeah. When Cam comes on, I'm excited. And that, that actually might have <laughs> that, that brought it up, but it probably brought me down because I was like, where's the bar? Where's the verse? Like, I need a, I need a Cam verse. Because, you know, they don't always put features on no more. Like, they just mm -hmm. be hitting features. I like that, too. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, like, I, I was excited to see Cam on there. But then it was, I was like, ah, like, yeah. yeah. Where, where's that, was that? A good intro. that was a good intro I, I, there's a lot of bangers on there the amari that's one of my favorite jones uh pride is a, uh pride is the devil like um that jones crazy if you got a little baby on there I, you win yeah. like, you win. And, I, and i liked how they didn't like credit him you know what i mean so it was like oh he just popped out of nowhere right that, that was fire yeah <laughs> Yo, man. So, I, yo, you were you were you were bring my man's up. Yeah, you know I mean, why why does Philly hate Dipset? Why does Philly hate Cameron so much? Jeez, why why don't why don't Philly give Dipset no no kind of props? Yeah, you know I mean, like y'all be talking crazy. And I say I said, yo, I'm, I'm gonna say something. <laughs> weird. I don't know. Like we, I guess it was. I guess Dipset and Chain Gang was kind of out at the same time. Okay, so okay. it seemed like. You know, we we our allegiance was the chain game. Of course, I don't okay. even know if we hated, that, but it just it just wasn't a thing here. It, I, I guess it's just regional. Are y'all closer to New York? I don't understand. Like, no, but I, think I don't really know where we all at on the mat. Go ahead, go ahead, Bria. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're closer to Philly, but I yeah. think I don't know. Dipset just had a hold on on us. It, they 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 just did. You know what I mean? I don't know more than state. Pro I don't know. I can't. Nah, well, I was, you know, I mean, that was like, you know, high school for me. So I, I like both. You know I mean, I had no problems with, with going with both. And then, you know, obviously when, you know, state property kind of dissolves, then it's like, then it's all about dip set, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like we just have a lot of, we have a lot of New York influence, like where we, where we're at. Um, there are, there are some people from Philly and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, yeah, New York styles and things like that. Like even when it comes to clothing and stuff like that, like, you know that that kind of might that might hit us first before like some of the Philly stuff, whatever. But yeah. but uh, I think I think people in 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 you know where where we from like they they fuck with Philly artists too, whatever. So, um, <laughs> all right. Um. Oh yeah. So so I, I was having like a circular art. So yeah. In terms of other music, in terms of other music, um, what else did y'all listen to? Did y'all listen to the 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 Nicki re-release? Do you guys see like that being the new trend? Like people like reworking their old albums and things like that. Or and and what albums would you like if that is the trend? What albums would you like to see reworked or mixtapes reworked? Um, I 
I definitely do like that. They're putting the mixtapes on it. That's that's like more people should do that. I'm trying to think of a of a good mixtape that should go on there. Is Detroit on streaming websites? Because I feel like that would be one. That needs that definitely needs I think to go on. Is there. it on there? I don't know. I don't th- just that piff, right? Like I think you could still get on that piff, but yeah, not, I was gonna like say Spotify. I think I still get one. Sound uh, yeah, I think you can look on uh, that piff or, you know, whatever mixtape sites and you see the greatest mixtapes because not everybody can do it. You know, you got to be J- Drake or Nicki, Wayne, even Meek. If Meek wanted to rework Flamers 2 or Ooh. DC 2 or something like that, Wiz, maybe, Wiz, throw out yeah. some, you know, he's got that fan base. So you got to be of a certain type of artist that can still actually rap now. Okay. You know, mix what's good bringing people that you didn't work with at the time but tight with now better production and you know it could be a thing i'm excited for it so so and then the nikki so i, I did listen to it um and you know i i don't i'm not like the biggest nikki fan i don't have nothing against her either um but um and i definitely like recognize some tracks that I, that were played whatever but then were there new tracks on there too or like because people keep talking about that seeing green and is that, yeah. is that too like what it was, I think it was one or it was like two or three tracks that was new, Fraction, Seeing Green. And um, I think that might have been it. Okay. I definitely re-listened to it. Nikki, and I'm glad she's getting her the respect. You know what I mean? It's like Chirac. Oh yeah, Chirac was on there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was gas. But I feel like Nikki was kind of getting in that same role as like Kanye and Lil Wayne, where it's like they were the goats, but now they're becoming like a joke. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, Nikki was. Oh, I just I like that she's getting her respect because that mixtape was, was was what it was. And she she probably is the the best female rapper. I would say that. Is that is that by default or because like there was no competition or no? I think it's think earned. That, okay. You know I think it's earned. I mean it could be by default. There's not a lot of female rappers out, but it's still earned. Like, not nah, she got it. <laughs> I don't see the. I think. And it's it's tough to say because like me and I, I hate that I, this happens to me. Like I feel like sometimes people's like off court antics, so to speak. Like it does kind of impact for me, like how I view the artists and stuff like that. And like yeah, like you know, Nikki was kind of like becoming like a meme. Yeah, you know I mean, like she's coming to joke, yeah. whatever. Like just for like just bad decisions, whatever. Yeah, you know I mean, mm-hmm. um, or or just just the way she kind of moving, like she kind of moving goofy, but. Um, yeah, like, I feel like, you know, there really wasn't much competition for her. Um, and, and, you know, I feel like when, once Cardi came out, you know, she felt threatened and then like, it was kind of quiet for Nikki. I mean, even though she was still putting out music, it wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah, what yeah. it was. Cardi had it for like a whole summer. Yeah. 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 Chamberlain, you know, she, she, Bill Russell, she was playing when it was only 11 teams and, and <laughs> you know. It wasn't a whole bunch of, you know, people. And then Kareem come. Now Wilt getting traded. They treating Wilt like he was Wilt. I can't. How do you trade Wilt Chamberlain? Right, I still right. don't. You know, it's just. You know, so credit, she dominated in her era. But, you know, you can only go against what's, you know, what's in front of you. Well, I think with the antics, too, and not, not even, like, with her like personal life and her family, whatever. I'm not talking about that, but like just the, the, she, I felt like she was reaching for accolades. You know I mean, like, or, or, you know, like now it's a lot of stats when it comes to streaming, whatever, like, Oh, I was, this person was this, whatever, whatever. And then I think when she says stuff like, like, Oh, she did something better than Aretha Franklin. I'm like, that's not even like, what are we talking about here? Like, you know I mean, like, you're not to say you're not Aretha Franklin. Like, you know I mean, like, hey. don't put yourself in the same sentence as Aretha Franklin. Like, you know I mean, if you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta use something that where everybody's like, yeah, fuck them. Like when Drake said he got more slaps than the Beatles, fuck the Beatles. I don't give a fuck about the Beatles. Exactly. But you can't say that about Aretha. Like people is like, all right, relax. Like you know. <laughs> yeah, like because because what do you? Yeah, like it's it's two different types of genres of music. It's it's a different way that that music is listened to. You know what I mean? Like if if you okay. just now passing Aretha Franklin, that means that Aretha like she was selling mad shit when <laughs> when you had to physically buy the shit. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. right. like why are you comparing? Your, and then the the type of music you make compared. Like, come on, like we're not gonna do exactly. that either. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was a bad comparison. Yeah, and I and I just felt like she was doing a lot of that type of stuff that stat that stat compiling whatever like is is like a clout thing, and I just think like that that kind of takes something away from her. But I don't think yeah, th- like lyrically, I don't think 
no no female rappers fucking with her. Maybe maybe rap city, but that's a different type of rap anyway, right? Like yeah, that definitely is. G's <laughs> smile like he like nah, I, I don't fuck with no rap. City. I would know. I would I know. Rap city. <laughs> He's like I don't want no I don't want no smoke with that whatever. Yeah, um, wait, you said you're not a fan of rap city or no? I've I've never I've never heard a rap. I don't know I don't know her music, so you know. She she can she could definitely rap. Um, I don't I don't say like I li- listen to her music though. Um, you know like like I said like I'm I'm kind of nowadays I'm listening for di- different things. Like you know I don't necessarily want to hear that all the time. Whatever. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So I right, uh, was there any other music that you guys listened to? Um, this like from from last week that came out. Anything else that was hot that people should check? Uh, no, no. I don't listen to it. music when it first comes out. I don't really listen to it off the rip, so it's like, nah, it probably have to come across my my my, my life. Okay, um, I did, I did. Well, I checked out that Georgia Smith, and um, um, you know, it was cool. It, it was cool. I let I let it kind of play. Um, she, I, I feel like there, like with R and B, like there's a lot of R and B has to grow on me. You know what I mean? Like I have to listen to it, whatever. Um, a, a, a few times for for me to even kind of like it, whatever. But um, she's kind of in that uh, category of like those like whisper kind of singers, whatever. And I feel like we got a lot of those. And and the one that I and like, I feel like you just pick one that you like. And I like yeah. Snow Allegra. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't really yeah. listen to Georgia Smith, but this last album is it sounded good. You know what I mean, but I, don't... I like Snow Allegra, but it's, it definitely is like that. Like it's like twenty singers that's kind of all the same. And it's like I'm just gonna pick one. I'm not about to listen to all y'all. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, and so I, so I said something about like um, artists or, or just things that people do and how it kind of it can kind of change your view of them or 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 maybe it doesn't whatever. So like um, let's switch it up. And um, have y'all uh, do y'all listen to the Joe Budden podcast at all? A bit. I stopped listening to it probably like a year ago, but I'm familiar with what goes on and I'm going to know. Okay, so you so you're you're aware of the drama that's all surrounding the Joe Budden podcast right now, um, and it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, so if you if you don't know, and for the people that that are listening that don't know, um, Joe Budden podcast he's been around for a, cu- a couple years, um, maybe like five years. They they've been doing this podcast, and he's done it with like two friends. And the thing is, like, if you ever try to explain <laughs> explain who these friends are, it's hard to explain like who they are to people. Like you're like, oh yo, it's Joe Budden and his boys, and you're like, well, who are his boys? Um, it's this uh this ginger white boy and uh this like this this chubby dude that's like his brother is is Biggs and and Hop from uh, uh Jay Z's engineer or whatever. So you're like uh okay who the fuck are those guys right? So uh recently they had a falling out whatever um and it seems to be about money um and things like that whatever um so geez I guess since you're familiar with it a little bit like who's whose side are you on like you know. It, or I don't like I said, do you know the ins and outs or whatever or um it just seems like what was gonna inevitably happen happened. Okay. It seems like uh they didn't have everything in order as far as you know what they were owed or entitled to. Because if it did, it wouldn't really be a thing. It would be like the paperwork is here, this is what you owe us, boom. You can cut ties, but you get your share and it just seemed like they never really had that from the jump. And I understand going in business with your friends and maybe you don't get all of that. It's awkward, right? It's like it's like prenup before marriage. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, it's an awkward conversation, but you got to have it. You can't go forward without it. You know, you don't want to end up paying for it on the end. And that's what, that's what it looked like is going on now. Right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess, and like I guess said, Bria, have you heard anything about this drama or whatever or? familiar with it but like not too much i didn't really see it okay so i'm, I'm kind of more and, and that's the thing like people looking at joe like he's crazy like oh he's cheating his friends and this and that whatever and i i really look at it like i always looked at it like it was his show or whatever and i did not always see their value <laughs> like like i guess they have a nice little dynamic but like you know you know geez that maul got the worst like when it comes to sports he got the worst sports I, take listen to me, the one that was like i was just like i can't I can't. It's just like it's every week. It's like I can't. <laughs> yeah, like he would say something like, and then and then like they they never would have like nothing to really talk about. Like like he would want them to share stories because you know Joe gives it up, whatever. 
and and like they would just be like they wouldn't like really chime in so i always like kind of question their value but i guess the bigger question to, to not even get in that because you know um and let everybody don't necessarily know the ins and outs or whatever but um how how do you successfully do business with your friends you know what i mean and and where where does that line kind of where do you draw that line whatever I'm sorry with you bria really like the saying like don't do business with your friends because it's like dang you know who am I supposed to do business with but but it's like I, I guess I can understand it you know but um I I, I, I don't really know you know what I mean I, I really don't know I feel like when the getting is good and everybody's up and everybody's making money it's like it's it's a perfect thing you know what I mean and I would I would love to bring my friends in to rare fine and it's like but I guess, I guess at a certain, at, at a certain point, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to let you start. I don't know. Yeah. What you think, man? How do you successfully like, you know, find that balance between friend and friends? I think, friends it, and uh, I think it depends on how early they come in. Right. So it's like, don't you know, they always say, uh, Steve Jobs and, uh, the other Steve, I can't remember his yeah, name. They built Apple. Yeah. Was, was, yeah. They built Apple in a garage. So they was, he was there on the ground floor, you know. I don't know how early Rory and Maul came into the podcast. It wasn't even called Always the Joe Budden Podcast, right? It was something else, right? Yeah, it was, it was called, uh, I'll name this podcast later. I'll name this later, yeah. Was you already part of it when it was called that? Um, Rory was, Maul came in, like, somewhere in the middle. Right. It was around the, the Drake the Drake beef, that's when. Yeah, so he already had his thing, you know. So it's like Rare Fine is already a thing. Now, if you want to bring in, you know, Ashley from childhood, all right, you're responsible for marketing. Your share is X amount. You bring in Tanisha, you're responsible for finding advertisers and whatever, whatever. You know, you just, you divide it there because you're already a thing, you know? So they should have had all of that mapped out. Once he changed the name to Go no Button Podcast, that should have been like, all right, so what's our, yeah, you know, yeah, let's figure true. this out. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, I hopefully, and it's, it's crazy because, like, they're kind of talking about each other and, and whatever, Um, but it seems like there's a lot of double talk. It seems like it wasn't an intentional thing, but then they just still want what's owed to them, whatever. And it seems like they're they're kind of being cordial about it, but, um, but yeah, I think some people then are like, oh, it's the end of an era, whatever. But I, I think the Joe Budden podcast is going to keep going. Um, He did get into some hot water with, with a female. Um, I don't know if y'all heard about that. Uh, with the, the girl Olivia Dope, nah. So it was so she, about it. yeah. She's she's uh she was a host on one of his other podcasts. Like he has um a network, whatever. And I guess like I don't know. He was wilding, man. He he was saying some some just making some suggestive jokes, whatever, and kind of like trying to get at her like on 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 the podcast, but like saying like stuff he wanted to fuck her and stuff like that. And it's like, yo, bro, like you can't, you can't say that to people that are your employees. You know what I mean? Whatever. Now that stuff was edited out, whatever. Um, and I hate, I, I, that is some like creepy shit, whatever. But like he, I guess he's apologized, whatever. But like, I hate that. Like, you know, like somebody I do like, you know, and they kind of get in the hot water. Cause then it makes you like, oh, you know, am I justifying, am I justifying it by supporting him, whatever, or, or whatever. But I don't know. <laughs> Joe's a wild boy, man. So, um, all right. So, real quick uh, with podcasts, uh, yo. So, Bria, you was I remember you was talking about a couple months ago. You was talking about uh, starting a podcast. Like, what is there anything any headway with that? Whatever. Because I remember I told you I, I wanted to do one. Uh, yeah, you know, you definitely did. I'm glad that you you got it up and running. This is lovely. But uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely trying to do it. Uh, I feel like I just want to make it perfect, and it's like it's not going to be perfect. I just need to do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I may use this space here to, uh, to get it together. It's just, I don't want to buy the equipment. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of like dragging my feet on buying all this equipment and then learning how to use it. But I'm like, that's what is it. Is it a lot of equipment? No, it's, well, and it depends on what level or what you're trying to do with it, whatever. Yeah. But anybody can kind of get started. You got a laptop, you you know what I mean? I'm Headphone. doing it through Zoom. So I, you know I mean, uh, a webcam, I got like a ring light. Got a microphone like it, it don't really take much and and uh it's funny because if you listen to my uh if you listen to it on spotify you hear an ad whatever about doing it on anchor and it's oh, like yeah, free, yeah. it's free to do it on there and all that so it's, uh -huh. it's you can monetize it all that like it's 
it's pretty easy but like would you do it with friends or is it going to be like this uh, the idea that you have like and what is that what is well, the idea, if, the idea or, or, is, you don't want or you want to share it is no no it's fine it, it's well i just want to do like um kind of like I guess who could I compare it to? I guess it would be more, kind of more like the Joe Budden podcast where it's like we're, we're, we're set up at a place, you know what I mean? We're all here. We all got microphones. And, and I want to do it with my friends, but I also want to bring in like, 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 like guests, you know what I mean? And it just be not so much talking about current events, but more so topics and segments, you know what I mean? Built around the guests or built around whatever is going on. Yeah, definitely. Like definitely. there's so many rants that we got that we got to talk about. Right, right. Yeah, that's and that's, you know, that's, it. yeah, that's good. That's good. And yeah. I, I think that's really what podcasting is. It's just like rants talk. and stuff, talking about random stuff, whatever, and hopefully people like it, whatever. But yeah. all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yo, um, let's talk about, let's talk about the streaming TV wars, right? So like, uh, you know, everybody's watching tv and it, right now i don't know if there's enough there's there's nothing on that like everybody is like kind of glued to like um you know like you know whenever uh let's see i guess power was one of those shows like at one point in time where everybody wanted to watch that if, yeah. if insecure came out everybody's watching that so I, right now right now I don't, it's kind of slow right now i think i think some some show snowfall just ended whatever um so and, and there's all these different streaming networks um, nowadays, you know what I mean? If you pay for all of them, you're paying for cable anyway, right? You know what I mean? Um, so like for y'all, who's who's winning the streaming TV wars? Uh, we'll start with you, G's. And, and what are um, you watching? As far as, as far as subscribers, it's, it's always going to be Netflix. They 200 million plus, they in the most countries. Um, so, you know, it's always going to be them for now. But while everybody is in building their own libraries like Disney, Disney Plus. Basically, you won't see anything Disney on Netflix anymore. You won't see anything Marvel, Star Wars, Nat Geo. They snatching all this stuff off and they putting it on their own thing. So if you have an IP library, you already in the league, like Peacock, NBC, Universal. So everything NBC, all the shows, Dirty Rock, Parks and Rec, The Office, any movies that's Universal, which is Jurassic Park, Fast and the Furious, uh, you know, all of that stuff is just going there. So, you know, stuff like Apple, they only have original TV shows, and a lot of that shit nobody really know of, like <laughs> All for Mankind. You know, that is right. You know, nah, uh, yeah, they got yeah. some shit with. Yeah, so it's just, I think it's Netflix, then it's Disney, and then it's everybody else. Amazon, I guess they got the second most original. Okay. Okay. No. So, all right. So then, I right, so I guess I, I asked more of the general, but I'm, I guess more for you, like who's winning for you? Like wh which, which one of these streaming services are you using the most? And then what, what, what are some shows that you're kind of watching right now? I spend most of my time on HBO Max. Okay. Honestly, like that's where I'm at all the time. I'm watching the show right now. Like it's, it's a, it's a Sunday night show on HBO. But it's like nobody really know about it because it's still harder to sit. Like, is it on HBO? Is it on HBO Max? How do okay. I find it? People who have HBO on cable don't know that they can just log in and have HBO Max. So it's it's hard to really figure out what to watch. There's no Game of Thrones. That's, you know, in the zeitgeist <laughs> right now that everybody knows. Right, right. <laughs> so so uh, what is that show called that, that, that you was referring to? It's called Mayor of Easttown. It's it's actually shot here in Pennsylvania, but it's like, I don't know, like Delco somewhere. Okay. Somewhere with Pennsylvania, but it's just like the suburbs. It's a murder mystery, and it's really good. Like, I really do uh, recommend it. All right, Rick. Okay. All right. So what about you, Bria? What you what you watching right now? What's I mean, what's winning for you? Exactly what he said. It definitely is HBO Max for me, too. I feel like Netflix does have it, but they kind of like... They like the Walmart, you know, it's like, yes. I'm not going, I'm not going in there. They got everything. <laughs> and I don't really want that. So it's like it's HBO Max for me. Um, I'm watching and Amazon Prime. I actually just got rid of Hulu for Amazon Prime. I'm like, look, I mean, I'm gonna pick one. <laughs> Amazon Prime went out for it because uh, Invincible. Oh, okay. Um, yes. I just started that. I just yes. Started. Yes. Yeah. They got some really good originals, but um so I, I finished Invincible, and now I've been looking. I've been looking for some. I don't know. This anime is kind of calling me. 
Game of Thrones is kind of calling me to rewatch it. So I'm like, ah. okay, you're going to go. Oh, no. oh, don't do that, Jeez. Don't, don't do not that. Do, He's that. Crazy. do not do that. Yo, yo, all right. So I started watching Game of Thrones because this dude, yo, he, he, he stayed at my, he stayed in my crib for a weekend, whatever. Um, And, and I seen him watching it. I seen him watching it, whatever. And I was like, yo, what you watching? And he's like, oh, I'm going to try this Game of Thrones, whatever. Wow. And then, and then, so I was like, all right. And then like, he left, whatever. And then I went, then I went to it and I was like, oh, yo, this shit is lit. And then I'm like, yo, cut. I'm trying to talk to him about it. He like, he like, I don't watch that shit. Yeah. You know I mean? And I'm like, what? Like you started it and then. How, Ooh, what, and then stop. What would make you stop that show, bro? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I watched, I watched the whole season. So 10 episodes and I, and I just was like pushing forward to every episode. It felt like a chore. I wasn't enjoying it. I felt like I was watching it like a job, like it was my job to watch it. It's my job to be in the know so I can be in a discussion. And then really, <laughs> if I want to talk bad about it, I can because I've seen it. I'm like, okay. it's just not worth it. Like, I don't want to watch it just so I can have the right bad about it. Like, especially how it ended. Like, if my favorite show of all time ended that bad, I would never discuss it again. I'm surprised I see people talking about Game of Thrones on the TL. Like, I would never talk about it, like. <laughs> Can I say something about yes. the ending? Yes, like, yeah, go ahead. Get your shit on. People gas it up. Just just coming off of like seeing it recently, it's like it's not that bad. The ending, it was bad. It was it was hurtful, but it was not like, oh, this is the worst ending ever. They ruined the show. It's like, no, it's still worth watching all them seasons. It's still worth it. Don't get discouraged if you've never seen it and they like, oh, don't watch it because the ending is trash. It's not that trash. Two episodes are trash in the ending. Nah, that whole that whole last season was kind of weak, like for real. Like, like when when you think of how <laughs> when you think about how well wait, wait, wait up. Is was that the was that the last season you talking about like when it's like the, the first person season, first person point of view, whatever, and, and Jon Snow is like buried underneath the, the crowd. Was that was that the last season? Was that the wait, season what? before? Remember, remember that there was that one when when they killed the young boy with the with the bow and arrow, or whatever, like in the middle right. of the battlefield, like that uh -huh. crazy. That was like the craziest like battle scene ever <laughs> on TV. So was that yeah. the last season? Or was that the season before the last? I want to say that was the season before the last. They yeah. killed the young boy. Yeah, the last season was where they had the big battle where they they faced off against the White Walkers. Yeah, and yeah. that wasn't that was a great episode. That whole the long night. Oh, they was no. they it was easy. It was too easy to beat the White Walkers. Like they, it was all this build up, whatever, for them not to like. I mean, and then like they do all this build up. That that's the problem with the last season. It was all this build up. All these. It was a lot points, of build up. A lot of plot points, and then you just you don't even use none of them. Like you don't. That's you, true. So that's yeah. where it was disappointing. But but I do recommend it though. Like and it yeah. and it's crazy. Like I never. It's hard for a show to end that way for me and me to still recommend still it. Still recommend it. True. But like no, it, it is. A, it's a good. Good ride, but for me, like I, I hate to tell people that, like, uh, like, oh, it's, it's a bad ending, whatever. But I, I don't want them to get disappointed. Like, hey, you yeah. should have told me this, and I'm like, well, Same. I don't, nah, I, I, I think, want you to still. I think it. you can you can recommend it confidently because it's like it's the ending is so it's so short that and it's so like it's bad, but it's so short that it's like you gonna you gonna be fulfilled. You know what I mean? You are gonna be fulfilled with 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 all of it. I'm excited for the, the prequel that's coming out. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. I'm low-key excited, too. Would, would you watch that? Would you watch that, Jeez? The, the prequel? Would you, like, start with a new one? No. Not messing with First it. of all, <laughs> that's one of, like, six prequels that they have in production. So, like, not a bad when you're getting a prequel for whatever other families you want prequels for, you're probably going to get it. I don't know these families. But whatever thing you think you want to see, it's probably in production. So y'all, y'all enjoy that. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, in terms of so yeah, so getting back into what we was talking about the the streaming wars, whatever. Um, yeah, I think I, I think yeah, Netflix is always going to be king. I think Hulu is is there because you know they get the current stuff. I don't think their originals are that great. You know what I mean, like Handmaid's Tale. I don't. I just I can't. Do I some people guess that up. I it sounds interesting. I never seen it. It's just it's too slow for me. Like it's just kind of like it just kind of like uh it, it it's it has potential because the world that they create is like oh this is fucked up. Yeah, you know I mean whatever. Mm -hmm. But then it's just like I don't feel like there's enough happening. Whatever. Um, 
so yeah, Hulu's up there, but I think yeah, Amazon is is kind of you know they're they're doing their thing. Um, and it's funny though, and I don't know if it's like a, I think it's a kind of a pandering thing, but like they try to in the previews they show all the like the black uh like different um shows or whatever that they have, and I, like I guess they're trying to tout that they have all this diversity, and I'm like I I, I see what y'all doing there, like I see what y'all trying to do, but um but no, like Invincible is dope. Um, yeah. I didn't. I'm kind of in the middle of them. Um. I can't, I can't, I can't fully watch that. Like, like I, I, I don't think I'm watching that. Yeah, it's just like I don't recommend it. You, you can, you can skip it. Mm, you can, it can, did you watch the whole thing? Nobody talk. You're not missing any conversation. It's no conversations being had that you want right. to be a part of. It's, 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 it's bare. It's, it's not deep. It's, it's mm. just skip it, please. Wow. Yeah, skip it. Yeah. Right. And I low key, I'm tired of seeing black trauma on TV. Like I think I've made a point to say I'm no longer watching any more black trauma. And I seen you talking about the Underground Railroad series. I'm like, eh, is that black trauma? Like I don't know. I want to see that. Yeah. So yeah, does it count if it's historical? So, so with that, so with so with that, it, I, it just depends on who's behind it, right? So Barry Jenkins is behind the Underground Railroad. He made. Uh, if Bill Street can talk and moonlight. So right there, you get a little bit of cachet. Like, all right, you know, somebody who really knows what they're doing and really cares about what's being told. And Amazon opened up the purse for it. Like, looks hella expensive. You know, set, production, all of that is really good. You get some, I mean, of course, you're going to get some scenes that's hard to watch, but it's not It's not overkill. It's not a lot of it. It's maybe like three scenes where, you know, somebody's getting whipped, but it's like, you know, they show what's necessary and then they, you know, they, they tell the, the important stuff. Okay. That one is, I recommend it. It's good. All right. And and you said, is Brad Pitt behind that one? He produced it, but, you know, him and Barry Jenkins produce a lot of stuff together. So it's not okay. surprising to see him on there. He he produced right. a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, definitely. HBO Max is, is doing their thing. I see you say, though, geez, uh, you said something about it's, I, I thought you said it's like the worst app of them all, though. Were you talking about like the functionality of it? or uh it's like it crashing and it like yo pixelating to where you watch like is this a vhs to kind of like go out and then come back yeah when i watched mortal kombat on, on launch night the shit was stretched out like it was like oh shit like i was watching it on a square tv like yo, like what's going on like you gotta come out the app and come back and it, they, they got a little like tech, technical issues but as far as you know outside of that I have no complaints. Yeah, I think I think the content is good, but yeah, I, I noticed something last night. I was trying to watch something, and like, yeah, the app was kind of funky. Like, it wasn't. I mean, I don't even like how they sort the shows necessarily. Yeah, even the interface. I was gonna say is like, where is the stuff I want to see? It's kind of yeah. it's kind of janky. Yeah. So, so, um, but are, are there any shows that are like appointment TV watching for you guys? Like, like that are that are current right now? Like that are going week to week? Is there anything that you guys are watching right now? I don't watch TV like that. Oh, you don't watch TV like that? Yeah. Not like that. I'm watching, well, I'm watching um, like, um, Godfather Harlem. Harlem. You guys watch Godfather Harlem? No, I've seen it, though. I've seen parts of it. Yeah. No. Godfather Harlem, I still watch. It's my guilty pleasure. I watch um, All American, whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, no, I, was say I, I, I do watch All American, but it's like, did it stop? Did it ever come back on? No, it did. It did. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, yeah, it came back on. There's like, um, it just came back. Uh, yeah, and that there's too many starts and stops with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that came back on like last Monday. So that there's, yeah. there's a new episode. That's there. like my corny watch. Like, look, yeah. it's a little corny, but I'm going to watch it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think everybody needs some corny. Yeah, I think it's it's. It's fine to have some corny watching. Just enough, yeah. It's just yeah, enough. Just, yeah, that's that's one of mine. So yeah, that. And then I watch stuff like nine one one. Like that shit is like just crazy to me. I, and Angela Bassett. I just I love I love <laughs> Angela. I love Angela. You know what I mean? Oh, she's the best. Uh, who else? What else am I watching? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much like streaming. Like yeah, Godfather Harlem. Like like this current. I guess I got to catch up with This Is Us because that came back. Um, they got rid of that show for life. That show for life that was on ABC. They they canceled that. Canceled. Damn. Yeah, they canceled, bro. Like, yeah, and this it, it's it ended with get in it. because it's like I can't trust this to come. I've been burned too many times. I can't even with Netflix originals. Like somebody, yeah. oh, you should watch Jupiter Legacy. I'm like, that show is getting canceled. They're not bringing that back. All right, That's so only on right now because the boys 
I'm not, it's just I'm like, not getting I'm, into that. Like that show be done. So y'all y'all prefer binge watching as a as opposed to like okay yeah yeah and yeah I definitely I, I, I prefer it but it's like. I still feel like there are shows that I got to like, oh, you know what I mean? I'm interested in them and because I want to. I was going to say, it's it's kind of like, um, like, uh, like tweeting, you know what I mean? At the same time, that's also a whole thing. Like I do kind of like that, like tweeting and everybody's on it. Like when Insecure is out, that's like, oh yeah, yeah on Twitter, I'm getting the laughs in yeah, while, <laughs> while it's on. And when is that coming back? I don't know. I hope it comes back on soon. They like, they said they were shooting. Um, I think we talked about this. They said they were shooting it like last a couple months ago. Okay, and that's the last season, right? I think so. Yeah, Man, yeah. I find out what's going on. That's sad. that baby, I, right? <laughs> right, that baby. <laughs> they, and yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that when when that comes back out. Oh, and geez, then, so, yo, one thing so, that you like to do is uh, you you you're a real movie buff. You know what I mean, like like you might as well just be like a movie critic or or director or whatever. I feel like you kind of you you kind of want to get into that lane a little bit when it t- comes to film, whatever. Like that seems like something that you're interested in. Um, but, but one thing you, you always have good recommendations. Now I don't watch a lot of movies because I feel like I've, I've been, I get burnt a lot with movies. You know what I mean? And I get so disappointed if a movie's bad. Um, so like what's, what's some, what are some movies right now that, that we got to watch now? Speaking of movies, I did last yesterday. I just took the family and we went to see that and I, I didn't have to go to movies. I guess, I guess I got to did it on Disney plus, but, uh, we've seen that, uh, Raya and the last dragon. That shit was dope. That shit was dope. I see that. that shit was dope. <laughs> That was good. Um, yeah, like I, I try to jump in front of stuff so I can keep people that I like that like to watch movies away from bad stuff. Like that's why I watched that whole them them in one week. So I was like, I don't want nobody else to see this. Like this shit is bad. <laughs> don't, don't time watch something good. You know, I kind of take the bullet. Right. So uh, as far as movies, um, it's this movie called The Lodge. Have you heard of it? Nope. <laughs> on uh so on um, where is it at hulu might be you just canceled hulu my fault yeah. but um yeah. you could probably run it for like 2.99 uh <laughs> so have y'all heard of this uh this cult called heaven's gate nah what's that bro it's, 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 a, it's a documentary on hbo max it's called heaven's gate it's basically like a like a like a uh two white people start a cult tough people they're gonna meet alien. It's white people shit, basically. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, so it's this girl. She was like the one survivor of the cult. They all, you know, committed suicide, but she survived. And she starts dating her psychiatrist. And her psychiatrist has two kids, and they go to this lodge for Christmas, and he has some business back in the city. So he leaves this girl with his two kids in this lodge. They snowed in, and it just goes from there. It's, it's, like, it's like a thriller. They call it a horror, but it's, it's really more like a thriller. And, um, yeah, it's good. I recommend it. Okay. Um, it's fucked up, but, uh, yeah, All right. I recommend so it. The Lodge. <laughs> All right, so The Lodge. Uh, and what, what else did you say? Uh, the TV show from HBO Max. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, Mayor of Easttown. I it's only like episode down. six right now. It's only seven episodes. It's like a mini series, kind of like the Night of or you know any other HBO murder mystery mini series. But it's really good. Okay, is there anything in the Check theaters? Is, is there any? Have you been to the theaters at all in the last couple months or whatever? Or or you, that's one thing yes. I like about HBO Max. They've been putting those those movies right to to yeah. streaming. Um, I haven't been back. I saw Tenet in the theaters. That was the last movie I saw. So that was what like a year ago. Okay. Um, they pushing everything back, so we probably don't get anything, you know, awesome until twenty twenty two. Really? Okay. Damn. Yeah. So nothing to really look forward to. What about Spiral? Uh, is that is that like whack? Or is that corny? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it depends. How many Saw movies have you seen? I seen like seven of them. Like I didn't see the eighth yeah, one. So you saw all of them. You, you just just watch this one. You might as well just watch it, right? <laughs> It's, I want to see it. I want to see it. You know, so <laughs> already like you know, you got Samuel Jackson, Chris. It's not great, but a lot of them, you know, they start getting goofy after a while. You know, they're just easy to churn out. They know they're gonna make a profit. This one is a little bit better, but it's not. I don't know how much they're gonna springboard and you know restart the whole thing. But 
it's okay. Okay. All right. Hey, do you have it? Do you watch a lot of movies, Bria? Or you know what I mean, okay. Is it is there anything that you want to recommend? Because that's I think too on social media, everybody's like, you know, oh, what, what should I watch? What should I watch? Whatever. So, uh -huh. what are some what are some recommendations you got? Uh, something good that I just seen. Um, man, I can't even think because I've been I've been on TVs. I've been on TV shows for a minute in series. Yeah, so I feel like I missed those, but um. I don't know. I, I wanted to ask Jesus about that um the one movie, The Woman in the, the in the Window, because I read that book. I never finished it. I read the book and I always wanted to know when I seen like they they scratched it and then they 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 just was like, fuck it, we're just gonna release it on Netflix. So like is it Wow, good? you read the book. So you kinda <laughs> well, you said you didn't finish it, so you don't really know. I don't really know the twist. Yeah. Um it's it's not good. Oh no, <laughs> no. Good. no. And I'm not one of who read books and you know oh this is better than that it don't it's not good you can skip it i watched it i just it's, it, it looks it's, so good it got a whole bunch of hair that you like it kind of beefed the cast up but i think got anthony mackie in there but he really just like on the phone talking to her he like a he's not even really in the movie but for one oh, kind of shit. Yeah, like <laughs> it's shit like that like it ain't it's you can't leave the house so you got this lady this crazy lady who spied her neighbors. It's one house. You see two floor on the basement. I, I may still watch it because I, I, it's like I just oh, got. Hey, you got you got prior commitment, so you can watch it. Los, skip it. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I, I, I'll skip it. I'll skip it. <laughs> But now it's funny because I, I mean I was I, I did see the preview and that shit I was like oh all right that shit it did look all right. right I was like hey what's going on yeah. but they be deceiving them trailers damn so all right so that's a skip all right so so yeah so I'm probably gonna check out Spiral um I guess I'll skip that the one with the window whatever in the lodge all right I, I'll make sure I check oh, that and yeah. Mayor Mayor of East Town I'll, I'll check that out yeah. all right. Um, so this is not so uh, we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon. Um, so um, this is not a sports like podcast. To kind of try to insert sports anywhere I can, but let's talk about the rise of Kwame Brown. Like, yo, have you seen? Have you? Has everybody seen this guy? Like, he's on a fucking tear right now. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I never heard this nigga talk in my life, like ever. Yeah, you know I mean, I've ever. Geez, like whatever. So like yo, and he has smoke for everybody right now. Like everybody, and like if, if you get in his way, he gonna fuck you up. He gonna he got some smoke for you, whatever. So yo, what what do, what do you say about this? Like like so, I didn't see where it first started, but I know the narrative. You know what I mean, and I know that you know we we watch sports. We know Kwame Brown is just a name that we use to to talk about people that are busts, whatever. You know, first round picks that that don't do nothing. Um, but he said he decided he's like, yo, I'm fucking tired of y'all bullshit, and I, I'm coming at y'all, whatever. And it's kind of refreshing, and I'm 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 tuned in, whatever. And I think I think it's about to, he about to get a show or something. It's about to turn into something big for him, um, and which is that's what's up, whatever. But uh, yo, man, what what's some of the crazy? Like, what's your reaction to some of this? Like, what what's going on, geez? <laughs> um, he it seems like. And you could probably tell this if you know anything about Jordan and Kobe, they work ethic. It just seemed like he was a bust, but it, it kind of affected him a lot harder than what people realize. So all the jokes and shit, like if you're the number one pick in NFL, like Tebow, Tebow fine with being a bust, whatever, whatever. But it seemed like the shit was a little bit deeper than him, and they didn't realize that. So him going off is just him getting all that shit off his chest from 20 years ago. You know, we like you said, we never seen him talk. So he hasn't talked to the media. He hasn't been on podcasts. He's never been on first tape. So him is like, look, I'm tired of being a buddy of y'all jokes. Y'all know what the fuck I've been through, you know, <laughs> and just letting it off. And I, I, I'm loving it. Like I'm loving it. Do you, Do you think uh, uh, Stephen Jackson or Matt Barnes do Do they want that smoke with him? Go ahead, Bria. <laughs> Go ahead, Bria. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. I, I don't even know. I feel like if, if he's kind of unfiltered, then they probably don't because Stephen A. Smith is like filtered, got a whole show. It's like you don't want to be messing with somebody that's talking reckless. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, yeah, he's he's coming at, yeah, he, see, he got Stephen Jackson. Who's on his hit list? It's yeah. Stephen Jackson. It's oh, Stephen Stephen Barnes. Jackson. Well, yeah, it's, it's Stephen A. Also, it's Stephen A. Smith, Stephen Jackson, Matt Barnes. Charlotte. 
he's coming at Charlemagne, calling them all type of rapists and, and trying to, I guess, oh. yeah, he's trying to pull up that narrative, whatever, which we got some people that we know, uh, geez, that like, they talk about that a lot, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like a mission. Like this, this, this woman that we know, like she, she always posting like Charlemagne the rapist, Charlemagne the rapist. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. But like, he, this is just, this is just a blurb, real quick. And he, he got his 15 minutes of fame, and then he's about to go back in onto his farm and and into obscurity again. You think it's? I don't really see him. I don't really see a thing for him, or really an audience long term for him. Just you know, bashing people because after a while, if nobody speak on him, it ain't really nobody for him to go at, you know? Well, he, he seemed like he had some like just shit to say, like not even just just about life, whatever. Like, you know, what I mean, talking about I, I think I think there might be a lane for him, whatever, especially now, uh, maybe in the manosphere, whatever. He seemed like he might be like a like a black Republican. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> like you know I mean? the way he kind of talking like and I think that. <laughs> Yo, because he talked about being with police and stuff like that, whatever. And, and like, so I think he, I, I, I'm scared for him. They might try to recruit him. You <laughs> know what I mean? He might be the next, uh, you know, like in that Candace Owens, like type of shit, whatever. Like where he just like, yeah, y'all, y'all think y'all know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so I don't know. So I, I, and I guess last thing then with sports. Um, so it is the playoffs. It's the playoffs. Um, who you got, man? Who, who, who's going to take it all? What's, what's it looking like? Who's the MVP? What's all that good stuff? Uh, we'll what? Yeah, yeah, we'll start with you. Yeah. So do you watch basketball, Bria? I do. I, I was just I was just saying I need a new team. Like my Spurs is my favorite team. They just they got knocked out. We lost Kawhi. It's been quiet for us for a long for a while. So I'm just gonna stay quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't have no horse in the race. I'm, I, I'm a fake Warriors fan. Um, like, you know, if, if they would have won, if they would have won, I would have been all about it. Like, I would have been on the bandwagon <laughs> talking mad shit, whatever. Um, but I don't really have a horse in the race. So I, I, I'm excited just for for good playoffs. I'm going to actually watch basketball because I have not really watched <laughs> much basketball all year. Um, but so, geez, who you got, man? Like, who, who's going to take it? Are you a Philly? Who is your? Oh, yeah, you're no matter of fact. I'm not gonna talk about your team because I'm not even gonna do that Who's to you. <laughs> he, he, he's a he's a Kings fan. <laughs> Ironically, man, we lost to y'all in the first round of 2006. So you talking about y'all got knocked out this year? We haven't seen the playoffs in 15 years. So you know, <laughs> preaching to the choir. But um, you know, they they saying Jokic for MVP, and I, I mean, I guess I agree. You know, second would be Embiid, but he kind of missed too many games. Joker literally played every game. Okay. They lost Jamal Murray. They got better. So, you know, I don't have no problems with him having MVP. But, you know, they lost to Portland last night. And, you know, I don't know if they can really handle Portland. So, if they get upset in the first round, yikes. You know, you give it – that's what happened with Giannis. You know, you give him MVP, they lose in the first round. It's mm. just like – MVP, but um, MVP curse. Yeah, yeah, they need to just give it out at the end of the season in front of the fans, like they, like bring that back because now you're taking too much baggage and then you're counting playoff loss for next year, where it's like, well, how are you the MVP? They lost in the first round. It's like, all right, whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's like I guess Nets Lakers. I don't really see nobody beating the Lakers. Not even the Clippers. Clippers don't got no chance with Kawhi. Well, you know, you saw what happened yesterday. You know, they lost game one at home, and they – I don't be, I don't believe the Clippers – they haven't been to the conference finals in 50 years. Damn. <laughs> like, that's that's a lot, you know. So, uh, the Clippers, I don't believe shit they say. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. So, so is, yeah, is LeBron about to make this, like, miraculous comeback? Because he was hurt for a little while, and now he's back for the playoffs. I guess he, he beat Curry in that play, playing game, whatever, and I think – and he hit a, he hit a crazy uh, three-point shot. Um, so, like, I, I think I think they're going to use that to kind of weaponize against Curry. <laughs> but I think, yo, it's, it's going to be scary for the NBA next year, man, because depending on what this this uh, Warriors pick is and with Clay coming back, like, the Warriors coming back, bro. Yeah. Uh, you know, if the, the Wolves pick fall, you know, any lower than three, they go to Golden State. Yeah. So then they have that pick, 
They have Clay coming back. They got the Wiseman piece. They can move them if they want. They they got some wiggle room. It's, I can't wait. I can't wait for next year. Yeah, yeah. So I I think um I mean Lakers probably by default you know what I mean but I probably would like to see the Clippers and then yeah I, I, the Nets you know I mean just because I like KD or whatever who 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 you got for who you got uh, taking it all Bria who you got getting there I'll say the Lakers Lakers <laughs> <laughs> still the king so you know it's gotta be him right <laughs> all, right. all right that kind of wraps it up whatever um um yo y'all had a good time today y'all y'all cool. Yeah, yeah, we needed this. Yeah. We needed. That's what's up, man. So yeah, like I said, man, just just trying to just trying to progress, just trying to you know get get this right, and uh, you know what I mean. Uh, so this is actually a milestone for me, right? Because and, and we talk about uh, we talk about this, or or I've heard this talked about on like right on Q Live, um, uh, geez, where uh, most podcasts don't get past episode seven. So if y'all don't know, this is episode eight. Right. So like I'm, you know, it's like a little bit of a, a, a little milestone, whatever. Um, yeah, man, I'm trying to, like I said, just trying to progress, whatever. I, I got to get Q on here. I got to get right on Q live on here, man. And, uh, you know, get some, I'm going to get some more uh, pod pod wisdom from my mans. Um, but, yo, like, uh, like, can you give everybody like your, your, your ads and, and everything like that? Where can they find you? Uh, Bria, where can they buy rare fine merchandise and all that good stuff? Okay. Well, you can find me, um, on Instagram, I kind of do all my dirt there. So at Rarefine717. And um, you can find me on Facebook, Bria Rarefine, kind of like my name here. And um, you can go on my website. It's www.rarefine717.com. And I got all the merch there. And, you know, you can just, yeah, there it is. Is there a summer, is there like a summer line coming out? Anything like anything? Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm working on it. Um, It kind of got pushed back a little bit just so that I can finalize everything. So this summer is definitely coming kind of, I want to say, not this month, but probably next month. Mid next month. Yeah. All right, all right, that's what's up. And then, geez, man, how can how can people find you on social media? Because I know you you be trying to hide a little bit, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm <laughs> Twitter, uh, at G's2100, any movie takes, TV takes, questions, suggestions. I'm here for all that, sports, football, basketball. I- I'm into all that. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. That's what's up, that's what's up. All right, uh, and that was the 280 Plus Podcast, and uh, we are out. Peace. <laughs>